And we're live! Hi guys, the Critter Keeper here, and we're back for another live stream video. And today, we're gonna talk about reptiles. Um, but before we begin, obviously, just again to let you guys know, obviously I can't see the, the, the questions that you guys are are asking me. Um, I do try and get through as many as I can after the stream is finished so I can answer your questions. So yeah, feel free to in the comments, put your questions about any of the animals, you know, even the ones that you've seen already um, at the start of the week. Um, any questions, keep sending those pictures in. Love seeing them. You're doing some great work with your homework. I will uh, be giving you another homework task at the end of the video, but more on that later. Now, um, <clears throat> we're going to start right at the beginning. Um, before we can talk about reptiles, we need to talk about dinosaurs. Here is my expert drawing of the Tyrannosaurus Rex. Okay, so obviously, when everybody thinks about reptiles, they do think of dinosaurs. Well, rightly so, because obviously, a long time ago, Dinosaurs ruled the planet and they were the biggest animals and the majority of animals made up on the planet were dinosaurs. Now, T-Rex actually translates uh, down to as King Lizard. So that's why everybody obviously thinks of, of reptiles uh, being dinosaurs. Now, they have. They have actually evolved um, from, from the, the big uh, T-Rex. Now, reptiles, which we're talking about today, um, it's a bit confusing because when you, if you were to know what reptile means, it actually means creeping, uh, creeping animal or that that creeps, um, which is kind of deceiving a little bit because there's lots of different types of reptiles. You know, some swim, um, some, um, you know, slither, uh, and some also fly. And they think fly, yeah, because birds. Okay, and um, technically, birds are actually reptiles. Although they're completely different to to what you think of a reptile, because the majority of reptiles are cold blooded. Well, all the reptiles are cold blooded, but birds aren't. And um, but birds evolved from dinosaurs, reptiles. So the T. Rex is actually now a chicken. Yeah. So you, when you go to, to McDonald's and you order six chicken McNuggets, you're actually getting six chicken Mc T. Rexes. <laughs> so yeah, um, so they've evolved. Um, so birds are actually reptiles too, but we break them into another group. But we'll talk about birds later on in the week. Hopefully, well tomorrow, uh, not tomorrow, maybe Monday we'll talk about birds. Um, but yeah, so for time to, today we're going to talk about reptiles. So obviously most of the reptiles uh, or dinosaurs evolved into reptiles and a lot evolved into birds. And, and the most famous uh, probably uh, dinosaur um, that hasn't changed or evolved much is your largest reptile and that is the crocodiles. Um, so yeah, so we're going to talk about some reptiles now. So first of all, um, we're going to talk about uh, some, some lizards. We're going to see ourselves a lizard. This is Drogon, and Drogon is my bearded dragon. Now, they're known as bearded dragons because they have these spikes underneath their chin. And when they get angry, mainly with other dragons, they'll puff out their spikes and it turns black. So it looks like they have a beard. He'll also open his mouth up really wide like this, and he'll bob his head up and down like this. So he looks really silly. Now, unfortunately, he doesn't have any wings and he can't breathe fire, so he's not like a real dragon. But he's still pretty cool nonetheless. Now, he is obviously the reptile, so he's a cold-blooded animal. So cold-blooded animals, and uh, the blood that travels around the inside of their body is cold. We are warm-blooded, and that's what keeps us warm. Uh, reptiles, they need the heat of the sun to heat them up and keep them nice and active. So that's why we find reptiles in nice, hot, warm countries. Although we do have a few reptile species here in the UK, but we don't have any large reptiles. The larger ones are found in hotter climate. So Drogon here is actually from... Australia, and you mainly find them in the outback, which is like a desert kind of region um, in Australia. Now, he's got a pretty cool feature to help keep him warm. He doesn't have two eyes, he's got three. So he has two eyes on the side of his head, these are his eyes for seeing. He can see really well, but he's got a third eye, and it's right on top of his head, right here. Now, he can't see out of this eye, but it is connected directly to his brain, 
and it tells him how hot or how cold he is. So it'll say, Drogon, you're a little bit cold. You should maybe climb on a nice warm rock to get some extra heat. But reptiles can also overheat as well. I know, I know they like nice warm um, places, but they can get too hot as well. So they do like to seek out shelter. So what some reptiles will actually do, like this guy, is he'll actually sunbathe in the sun with his mouth wide open. And he's actually trying to get the, the sun to evaporate the saliva in his mouth, which helps cool down his body. So that's why if you ever go on holiday and you see a, a lizard basking in the sun with his mouth open, he's trying to cool himself down because he's too hot. Now he has also the, 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 the eye on top also tells him when it's daytime or nighttime. So at night time it says it's night time, it's time to go to bed and sleep. It's a shame that children don't have that same feature. <laughs> it's called a partial eye, okay? Now he's also what you call an omnivore. Now that's a pretty big word. Now an omnivore is an animal that eats both plants and meat. So he's not a strict carnivore, which is just a meat eater. And he's not a strict uh, herbivore, which is a plant eater. So he's an omnivore, which means he can eat both. But you see the meat he eats, it's not chicken nuggets or T-Rex nuggets. It is um, actually bugs, that's what he prefers to eat. All right, so he is pretty cool. Now they have all these, I'm gonna come a little bit closer to you guys so you can have a little closer look at them. So he has, uh, he has got very sharp claws for climbing and he has lots of spikes down the side of his body. And um, now these spikes are actually quite soft to touch but if I was to grab him from the top and I maybe hurt him a little bit, he would puff out sideways and that would make those spark spikes quite sharp. So in the hope that whoever grabs him lets go. So it's quite a good defense mechanism. Things like birds, birds of prey could swoop down off, grab these guys off of rocks and that would help them um, try and escape. They're very fast and when they want to, to move, although Drogon, he's particularly lazy uh, because he's a, he's a pet lizard uh, and the majority of pet lizards that you know uh, these are the most popular pet lizards a lot of people have bearded dragons as pets and um, you'll find as well that yes they are a bit lazy they tend to just sit on on a basking branch uh, there and i think he's been pretty well behaved uh, as our drogon um, and maybe give him a treat and we're gonna we, i am gonna go into more detail because like i said i've got a lot a lot of animals in my care and um, lots of reptiles lots of different types of lizards and um, because you do get a lot of different types of lizard um, and we're going to talk about that hopefully next week and um, I'm going to show you some of my other lizards so I've got some pretty big big lizards like the iguanas um, and I've got some small ones too so like geckos and um, so let me show you some of them I can do a, a talk all about lizards and I can explain a little bit about, about uh, some of the other cool lizards that you get on our planet. But that's Drogon. He's looking at something. I what you're looking at. But um, here we go. Put him down here. We'll give him a treat. <clears throat> right. I've got some Morio worms here. So hopefully, can you see them all right there? Yeah. Can you see the yeah. tail? I'm going to put some bugs see down everything. Right. I'm going to put these are Morio worms, big giant meal worms. Let's see if you'll have one for a little snack for being a good boy. Let's put one down there. Drogon. He's looking at something over here. Drogon, look. He's looking at you with his other eye. Is he? He's not is. interested in it. Look, Drogon. Down here. Oh well, it doesn't look like Drogon wants to eat for us today. Well, the mealworm must be happy. He gets the lid. Yeah, right, right, right. Look, Drogon, look. Down here. Drogon. There you go. You see that now? Now, 
say I always say, never work with children or animals. And yes, I do both. No, Drogon. And see, usually Drogon munches these bugs up. He worms. Going backwards. I didn't see that, but one of the male worms was walking backwards. Right. So no, he doesn't want to. But you want to know what a mealworm is, and um, mealworms are actually a larva stage of a uh, beetle. So they don't actually change into beetles so they don't get munched up. Oh, Drogon. So, so there you go, that's Drogon through the dragon. He doesn't appear to be hungry. So say goodbye. actually shedding his skin so that's what you know reptiles do shed their skin I'll explain a little bit more hopefully with this one when I take him out and um, and when they shed their skin you've got to kind of leave them be so I couldn't couldn't take take him out so I've had to go with my other big snake now this one he's he's not the same he's a little bit temperamental could be a bit feisty and so I'm not really looking forward to taking him out so I'm hoping that he's gonna behave himself and, and he will um, behave and, and, and not ha have any issues with him so I'm going to slowly, obviously this is a box but in within the box is another box and um, with another lid on it it's just to keep him secure so he doesn't he just like to try and jump out and, and, uh, and get out any time he can so I've got securely in here so what I'm going to do is I'm going to slowly lift the lid off when I lift the lid off uh, hopefully he'll, he'll um, be good so just to, Mackenzie just stay nice and still for me okay no sudden movements Okay. And because that could, you know, trigger my little bit. So nice and still, okay. and I'm going to slowly lift the lid off. Okay? okay. Right now, I have had problems with this lid in the past. Uh, it's been stuck, and um, I'm hoping the lid will come off. Oh, guys, no, the lid's stuck. Right, I'll give it one more try. If I can't get the lid off, we might have to skip the snake, uh, and that's probably a good thing. Yeah. Oh no, it's coming. Here we go. I've got. It. I was just joking, um, that, obviously, I do have a snake in this box, but I just like to put up Frank Mackenzie and you guys at home. Um, my snake, this is a snake I use all the time, and it is actually Carr. So here we go, this is Ka, <clears throat> and Ka is my royal python. Now, he's not a dangerous snake, okay? So he's not venomous, he's actually a constricting snake. So that's the snakes that squeeze their dinner eh, to death. The largest snakes in the world are your constricting snakes. The biggest is the reticulated python, um, which can grow to a whopping 26 foot long. Second largest snake in the world is often what people think is the biggest, but it's not. That's the heaviest snake, and that is the green anaconda. You see, they only grow a length of 21 foot long. Tiny. They're found in the Amazon. Now, these guys, they don't really get much bigger than this. So they're actually four or four and a half feet long. Um, <clears throat> so it's tiny compared to their larger cousins. But how they hunt and kill their prey, exactly the same. 
So these guys are actually found in Africa, and they're mainly found in woodlands and scrublands. Those different patterns, different shades of creams and browns you can see on his back there kind of reminds me of army camouflage. And that helps him blend in with his environment, so it's very difficult to spot him in the woodlands and scrubs of Africa. Now, can you see him there sticking his tongue out? Now, he's not being rude. That's how snakes smell. So they're smelling and tasting at the same time. Now, he's doing that for two reasons. One, he's just checking to make sure everybody here is nice and friendly and not going to hurt him. But two, he's checking to see if there's any food. So these guys eat rodents, so things like mice and rats, and that's what makes snakes so important and why we need snakes on our planet. Because they do control the rodent population. Now rodents, things like mice and rats, they can reproduce and breed at an alarming rate, so you get a lot of them. They can also carry horrible disease. So it's important to have animals like snakes to control that population of animals. So it's a nice balance. So everything's here for a reason. And, and, and they're controlling everything else. So if you take something away, it has an impact along the line. So snakes around, having around are good. That's why we have snakes on every single continent bar Antarctic. So snakes are found all over the world. We even have a few species of snake here in the UK. Snakes are quite good at eating other snakes. So they're good at controlling their own population too. So let's imagine now, Car here, he's at home, he's back in Africa, he's down on the forest floor and he's flicking that tongue out every so often. Let's say there's a large forest rat scurrying around the leaves. Now he knows it's there, so he coils his neck muscles back in a spring motion. When the rat is in striking distance, he will lunge forward with his mouth wide open. Now he does have tiny little sharp teeth inside his mouth, so he claps a hold of the rat and he doesn't let go. He then coils his body around the body of the rat and he squeezes. Now he's pure muscle in here, very strong. He's going to squeeze so hard that he does actually physically stop the rat's heart. So he's stopping the circulation of blood traveling around the rat's body, starving the brain of oxygen, suffocating, killing the rat. That means he can now eat it. You see, snakes don't chew their dinner, they swallow it down whole. So you might think, what, how can a snake with a head that size eat something like a large rat in one go? But you can manage it no bother at all because of his special jaw. The lower jaw, bones not fused together like ours, it's actually elasticated, so it comes down and it splits into two parts. So that makes his mouth really wide. He uses the muscles in his neck to push and squeeze the food down and into his tummy. So he'll digest everything, including the bone, so nothing is wasted, everything's digested, takes about seven days to fully digest their dinner. <laughs> now this snake is actually known as the Royal Python, because a long, long time ago there was a lady called Queen Cleopatra. You may be heard of her, she was an Egyptian queen. She used to wear these snakes, living, breathing snakes, just like this one, around her wrists and around her neck, like jewellery. Yeah, she was a strange woman. <laughs> Another name for the snake is the ball python. That's because if you used to ever meet one of these in the wild, it wouldn't try and slither away from you, and it wouldn't become angry or aggressive and try and bite you. It would actually roll itself up into a tight ball because it was scared. An extremely docile species of snake, and also very popular in the pet trade as well. I'd say they're the puppy dogs of the snake world. Now, obviously, a lot of people think snakes are slimy. They're not slimy. They've never been slimy. They're actually quite smooth to touch and not wet at all. Now, <clears throat> we do have, obviously, some, some dangerous snakes on our planet. The majority of dangerous snakes, um, you obviously stay away from them. Um, they're venomous and can, can do some pretty bad damage to you. But you respect the snakes. If you leave them be, they're not going to touch you. I mean, the rattlesnake's probably the most uh, popular um, dangerous snake that actually comes with a warning. So it's, you know, it's actually telling you if you get anywhere near it, it, has, it brings its tail up with a rattle and it starts making a noise. It's actually physically speaking to you, telling you, back off, back off, please don't come any closer. I don't want you to stand on me. Don't want you to hurt me. If you get any closer, I'm going to have to bite you. So if you, if you listen to the snake and realise you know, it's there, walk away from it, it's not going to touch you. Yeah, so that's the majority of snakes uh, uh, come with warnings as well. They just want to be left alone to do what they want to do. Obviously, snakes have evolved, um, reptiles, cold-blooded animals, and they've evolved um, over the, over many years of evolution. They actually do have, uh, did used to have um, uh, legs, so like lizards, but they have evolved to, and those legs uh, are no longer needed, so now they slither around. But if you were to take um, an x-ray, take the snake and put him in an x-ray, you'd actually see the, the small leg bones, um, the four of them, um, next in his body where the legs used to be um, and where they've evolved. They've still got small bones there that show you that they have, still have legs. If you were to have a look at that x-ray again, 
because a lot of people think what does the inside of a snake look like well it's basically like if you see a, uh, an x-ray of a human body we have our rib cage and it protects our vital organs basically snakes have that the entire length of their body and um, just to protect all the insides there with, with, with bones and um, kids always ask me whenever I visit schools and I and they, they always say how does a snake poop now you're curious you want to know I can tell you well here we go he got his head he's, he's actually trying to show you where about he poops <laughs> he's put his head down by his tail now <clears throat> the head and then he's got his um body this is all his body right to here now from here to there is his tail so he's got a tiny tail yeah just from there to there and then that just next to his tail right there is where he goes to the toilets that's where his bum is and, and they go to the toilet just like us and it does stink and um, and that's also where his boy bits are because reptiles is very difficult to tell if reptile is a boy or a girl because all reptiles their organs, their sexual organs are actually inside their body, so you don't actually see them. So it's very difficult to tell um, if uh, you know if a snake or or any reptile is a boy or a girl. But generally, boys are smaller than the than the girls. The girls are a lot bigger, especially in snakes, and um, because the snakes and also all reptiles, the majority of them do lay eggs. So they're designed. The females are designed to carry the eggs. Uh, before she she uh, she uh, uh, you know lays the eggs, <clears throat> so yeah, generally bigger. So that's Ka. Ka is uh, my favourite snake that I have. And I do have seven snakes, and again, um, hopefully next week I'll do an episode just with the snakes, so you can see my other snakes. Okay. Now, um, yeah, so there you go. We'll say goodbye. Now, do you guys know uh, what a, a, a snake's favourite subject at school is? It's history. <laughs> there we go. So let's say goodbye. <laughs> Bye. See you, car. See you, car. actually have one more reptile to show you. <clears throat> this is Anastasia. Now, whenever I take this animal out, because I visit obviously lots of schools and nurseries, and Anastasia, she always comes with me. Uh, when I take her out, you know, all the children, especially younger children, they'll shout out, uh, Turtle! Now, it's not a turtle. It is a tortoise, okay? Now, I understand why children, uh, especially younger ones, do get muddled up, because it is a bit confusing. Turtles, tortoise, they all kind of look the same. They look the same for a reason because they are actually part of the same group of animals. They belong to um, a reptile group called Chenolians, but how you tell the difference is actually quite easy once you know. We just look at their feet. So if they have fins or webbed feet used for swimming, that means they live in and around water. That's what makes them a turtle. So if they live on land, they have feet, they cannot swim, tortoise. So it's water turtles, land tortoise. So that's how you tell the difference. So, so this is Anastasia. Now Anastasia, she is uh, my horse field or Russian tortoise. <laughs> I'm not sure why though, because she's quite slow. <laughs> now Anastasia, she's very proud of her sh shell. She likes to show her shell off. She's going to show you how her shell goes right the way around her body. Are you ready Anastasia? One, two, three and ta-da! So you can see her shell goes right the way around her body. Now that is not her home, okay? It is there to protect her. Um, when she's scared, she'll poke her head right, right back in and then the front feet will go up in front to protect her further. The shell is all part of her skeleton. It's all made of bone and the material that covers the shell is the same as your fingernails. It's just a layer to protect the bone underneath. She is actually the oldest animal I have here with me today. She is 
14 years old and she can live for around about 60 years. That's quite a long time for an animal to live, but there are some tortoise that, uh, that can live even longer, um, like almost 200 years. And, and that's your really, really big ones, like your Albera and Galapagos tortoise that can grow and live for that long. So that's a really long, long, long time. Now she does have very sharp claws. And these claws are for digging because she'll actually dig underground and that's where she'll spend most of the day, especially in the really hot climate. And these guys are found on the border of Russia, Afghanistan, Pakistan. So they're actually found up in the, in the, in the hills and in the rocky regions and they eat on, munch on the plants and things. So during the summertime, it can get very, very hot. So they do what uh, a lot of people do in places like Spain, have a siesta. So they have a little snooze during the hottest part of the day and then they'll come back out again in the evening where it's a bit cooler, start munching on the plants. This is also a tortoise um, that can hibernate. A lot of tortoise around the world do hibernate because obviously there's no food for them during the winter months because the weeds and flowers all die off. So these guys will sleep on the ground uh, and um, all through the winter and then come back out in springtime when the plants start coming out. She also has a very sharp beak. Um, now that's... Um, serrated with lots of little kind of like teeth and that's designed for obviously ripping off the leaves uh, they are pretty uh, you know ferocious eaters when it comes to eating plants and things uh, one of Anastasia's favorite foods that she likes to eat is actually strawberries um, and when she sees a strawberry she usually sticks her face right into it and, she starts munching it, and her face is all covered in strawberry so she can get quite messy uh, eating your strawberries. But you do like your strawberries, don't you, Anastasia? Mm -hmm. So there we go. And obviously these guys, they do have tails. Joy reptiles do have tails. Uh, and um, how you tell the difference, um, again, male, female, is generally the size of the tail. So if they're quite thick, fat tails, she generally is a, a female and because of that tail is designed to lay the eggs. Yes, that is... Uh, Anastasia, let's see if we can get a closer look at Anastasia. Go Anastasia. There we go. <clears throat> you can see that there. Yep. Anastasia should be wiggly. Mm -hmm. Trying to wiggle out of my. Yeah. So obviously, whenever I um, whenever I get an animal. <clears throat> Whenever I get an animal, or if I know that I'm getting an animal, so I do get a lot of, I do get a lot of, a lot of the animals that I do have in my care, they are rescued, abandoned animals, and um, ones that people no longer want as pets, um, and I take two times. When I know an, I'm going to get an animal, I do try and do as much research as I possibly can. And when I found out that I was going to be getting a tortoise, I went down to the library and I said to the librarian, "Do you have any books on tortoise?" And she said, "Yeah, hardback." And I said, "Yeah, it's got a little head and feet as well." <laughs> so there you go. Uh, that is Anastasia. <laughs> Looks like Anastasia doesn't want to be on TV anymore. She's so straight head back. You want to go back in your box? Okay, Anastasia. I do let her out in the garden, um, especially during the wind, uh, the summertime when it's a lot warmer. And um, she's quite good to have around. I do have a little patch that I grow, um, uh, like weeds, like uh, dandelions. And she loves munching on the dandelion leaves. Um, so it's just good to, to have for that, to get rid of those dandelion leaves. She's a herbivore. I should have said that. She's a herbivore. So like, obviously the lizard, we sort of start bearded dragon. Drogon was a omnivore. The snake's a carnivore. And this guy is a herbivore. So he, she, only eats, um, she only eats plants, weeds and flowers, occasional fruit. Now I do have a total of three tortoises. This is one of them. And I'm hoping to show you my other tortoise. Uh, we'll do another another day of uh, live stream, and I'll show you my other two tortoise, and I'll explain to them because one of the other tortoise that I've got is um, quite a special one, uh, and I'll explain why when we do that video. So there we go. I'm gonna say goodbye, Anastasia. Bye. Okay, so there we go. That is um, that is us uh, all about reptiles today. I uh, hope you've enjoyed that. Uh, I'm going to set you some homework now. Um, 
I noticed that you guys seem to really enjoy doing the, the pictures and stuff. So you can send in pictures. If you want to draw pictures of a reptile, that's great. I, I'd love to see uh, your, your reptile pictures. But also, if you guys, I've shown you a lot of my animals, yeah? I've, I've, I've got, and I've still got lots more to show you. And I'm, I'm thinking, well, why, if maybe you guys have got, you know, animals at home, you've got pets, send, get, get your mum to, you know, let you use, mum and dad use your phone. You can take a picture of your animal and then you tell me what it is. Tell me a little bit about the name of your animal um, and I'll have a look. I would really enjoy uh, looking through them. If you don't have a pet at home, and um, tell me, you know, if you could have a pet, what would it be? Uh, and what would you call it? Things like that. And uh, send them in. That would be great. And um, yeah, so we'll just uh, see you guys tomorrow. Yeah. Dad, what? I found another one. It was in mom's handbag. Oh, shh. See you later, guys.